This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got a big week on tap here in the sporting world with the NBA and Stanley Cup Finals now set. We're going to break down both of those later on this week with Tom Vecchio getting his thoughts on those. We have got the Belmont Stakes preview of that coming up on Wednesday as well. So a lot of good stuff on the calendar for throughout this week here on Covering the Spread. For today... We're going to take a pause for a second and talk about some baseball because I think we've got some pretty intriguing games going on for tonight. Some pretty fun odds at FanDuel Sportsbook, a couple of money lines I like, a total, and a strikeout alternate market prop that I think are all values. So we're going to break down those and let you know my favorite bets across Major League Baseball for tonight. Welcome on into you covering the spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research here to break down on Monday's MLB betting slate, letting you know my favorite betting values at FanDuel Sportsbook for tonight. We'll dive into all that here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. All those good shows coming up later on this week. NBA, NHL, Belmont Stakes, all right here in this exact same feed. So go search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating and review as well. Speaking of the NBA Finals, they're almost here, but it's not too late to get in on the action with FanDuel because right now, new customers Customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to use on same game parlays, live bets, championship futures, and so much more. There is no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook, FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets, which expire seven days after receipt. Not available in North Carolina. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Vermont, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat Connecticut, one 800 9 with it in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Let's begin our baseball discussion for today by talking about my two favorite money lines at FanDuel Sportsbook for tonight. The first money line I like is in one of the earlier games that is between the Mets and the Nationals. And the Mets throwing Tyler McGill, taking on Mackenzie Gore. McGore, Gore has been awesome so far this year, but I think there's some value in the Mets at plus 104 of FanDuel Sportsbook. And it's probably based on the numbers, but also partly based on an injury for the Nationals, which is more anecdotal. And that's C.J. Abrams. Abrams dealing with a shoulder injury. He has kind of been their catalyst throughout this year, I would say, at least offensively, hitting for power, doing work on the bases as well. And he plays a key position. Defense for Abrams has not been great. so. You know, that's one thing, but missing this guy from this lineup, which is not super deep, would be pretty tough. Abrams did not play Saturday, scratched from the lineup on Sunday, which means he may not play today. And if he does play, that shoulder injury is pretty concerning for a guy who does a lot of good work with his bat. It's hard to expect him to be 100%, which would boost the Mets here. It is still a tough task for them because Mackenzie Gore is awesome this year, looking like kind of living up to the height that he had as a prospect. And I don't want to go against him very often. As for the Mets, they're facing, uh, they're starting Tyler McGill, who's looked really good in three starts this year, which is a very small sample. But I don't think it's that hard to believe because outside of last year, McGill has always had pretty good underlying numbers. So I wouldn't be super shocked if he were to at least keep part of this up. The Mets have obviously been awful so far this year. The results have not been in their favor by any means, but 
I do still think that they're a bit undervalued here. Uh, their offense is better than the Nationals, even with Abrams, if we assume he's in there. The Nationals defense is a bit worse than the Mets. The Mets bullpen is better peripherals too. So I don't like betting against Mackenzie Gore, but I do agree with my model, which has the Mets favored in this game. So we'll take the Mets as our first bet of the night, plus 104 on their money line at FanDuel Sportsbook. It's one of my top money lines for tonight. The other money line is going to be at West as the Rockies take on the uh, as the Rockies take on the Cincinnati Reds here. There are a couple factors at play that push me towards the Rockies money line, which is at plus one ten. The first one is that Andrew Abbott has never really been a guy who has been super high on my list, and it kind of seems like he's tinkering right now. Over his past nine starts, he has been throwing fewer curveballs and more forcing fastballs. The curve for Abbott has not been a good pitch, but the four-seamer really isn't either. I'd rather see that a usage if he's going to cut back on the curveball go somewhere else. In that span, his ERA is pretty good at 3.25, but he has a 4.46 skill interactive ERA. So it's partly because I'm a bit lower on Abbott than some other people seem to be. But I also like Ryan Feltner, who is a starter for the Rockies tonight. I like a lot what he's doing. He's not getting a ton of strikeouts, which you would prefer to see at Coors Field, but you could get more based on the number of whiffs he's getting. He does get some ground balls, doesn't let up a ton of impactful contact. And yeah, he can still get beat around because the Guardians did a lot of work against him last week, but he has some really nice outings as well. I have the Rockies as slight favorites in this game, and we're getting a plus 110 right now. I think that overall, the Rockies just a bit underrated with where things stand right now. If they do get a lead early, you got to kind of grit through a this this bullpen, which is not super enjoyable, but I think I can live with that here given the value I've got on the Rockies. Again, a plus 110 is their money line. Now, if we scroll up here, you'll see that there is a 30% profit boost available at FanDuel Sportsbook for tonight on same game parlays. I do think this is probably the game I'd be targeting if you were to go with a same game parlay. Uh, that would include the Rockies money line, of course. I do think that Feltner's strikeout prop is intriguing. He is at four and a half right now with the over at minus 102. I got him projected in the five range. Uh, so, and he does have a, this year at least, a higher strike rate at home than on the road, despite the fact Core is a very tough place to get strikeouts. And we could go with Andrew Abbott. Uh, Fandle's lower on him than others in terms of his strikeout prop, but it is a tough place to get strikeouts. He is on the road, doesn't get a ton of strikeouts to begin with. So I think you could go with this three-leg same game parlay. The Rockies money line at plus 110, Ryan Feltner over four and a half strikeouts minus 102, Andrew Abbott under four and a half strikeouts at plus 122. That adds up to be plus 551 at FanDuel Sportsbook for that three-leg same game parlay. So if you want to, you know, if you're looking for a same game parlay, this is where the, the game I would turn to first is Rockies money line, Feltner over four and a half strikeouts, Abbott under four and a half strikeouts, adds it to plus 551 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Prefer to go with just the money line personally, but odds boosts are nice to use. So I would check out the details on that odds boost over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And to me, that is the preferred game if I'm going to use that. So two money lines I like are the Mets at plus 104 and the Rockies at plus 110. Do you want to talk about one strikeout prop for today? And I want to do a better job about dipping into the alt markets when it's pitchers who have upside. And I feel like Tarek Skubal is that guy. And I feel like at his baseline prop, over six and a half strikeouts is minus 148 right now. And getting seven strikeouts 60% of the time is a pretty tall ask. But his alternate market to get you eight plus strikeouts is plus 130. And I think that's a bit more interesting because you are getting plus money and you're banking on the fact that that Scoobal has upside. He has some volatility in the positive sense. So let's talk about Scoobal and why I want to go to this market to begin with, because he has a 2.01 ERA this year, a 2.42 expected ERA, and he's not really dipping a lot on the road. He's on the road tonight taking on the Texas, Ra Texas Rangers. He has a 37% strikeout rate on the road this year. Now, Last year, like most pitchers, did have a higher strikeout rate at home than on the road, which is what you expect. So don't say, I'm not saying to bump him up on the road, but I'm saying maybe don't overreact to the fact that he is on the road for today. And he can clearly pop off when he's not in Detroit. I also do think the strikeout rate for Scooble could increase a bit because he's had some lower strikeout matchups recently. He's had the Diamondbacks, the Royals, the Astros all recently. 
And he's now facing the Rangers, who are slightly above average in terms of strikeouts against lefties. 23.3% is their mark versus lefties this year. They're facing Scoobal, or they did face Scoobal back in Detroit in April, and Scoobal had just six strikeouts there with a 12.8% swinging strike rate, which is not great by any means. That projects to be about, you know, a 26% strikeout rate, which is around where he was. But I do think he has a lot of upside. Now, if we're looking at the track record here, Scoobal's gotten eight plus strikeouts in only four out of 11 games this year. That's 36%. And his implied odds uh, at plus 130 are around the 45% range. But I've got him projected at 7.98 strikeouts for tonight, both due to pitch count, due to effectiveness, due to matchup, uh, factoring in that he is on the road. And that gets him to eight strikeouts about half the time. So I'm not positive he'll get there, but we're getting pretty good plus money to account for the volatility. So again, I want to do a better job about diving into alt markets on pitchers like Scooble who have this kind of upside um, and I think can really pop off to take advantage of the long tail that they have towards the over. So Scooble, eight plus strikeouts, plus 130 at FanDuel Sportsbook. I don't hate if you want to go a bit higher than that. You know, he's uh, plus 250 to get nine plus strikeouts, plus 470 to get double digits. That is obviously going to be a tough ask always, but guys projected at 7.98 strikeouts can definitely get there. Uh, looks like eh, closer to around 27%. So it would be a value at plus 470, at least for me. So um, it's a consideration to go with a ladder type approach with Scuba where you put a little bit on. Um, I wouldn't go the baseline because I don't think that's a value at minus uh, 148, but put a little bit on eight plus strikeouts, maybe a bit more on nine, tiny bit on 10, taking your typical bet size, dividing that down. So you're not overexposed to a single pitcher in a pretty volatile market. But I think that Scoobal specifically worthy of that kind of enthusiasm based on what he has shown us so far this year. The final bet that I like is a total, and that is in the Giants versus Diamondbacks game. The total in that game is nine runs, and I want to go towards the under at minus 115. And part of it is because the roof is closed for tonight, which does hurt offense. Lower temperatures mean that the ball flies less far. But I also think that both primary pitchers in this game are a bit underrated. Ryan Nelson starting for the Diamondbacks, who has been throwing his cutter a lot more this year, and... That pitch does a very good job of suppressing hard contact. The expected slugging percentage against his cutter so far this year at Baseball Savant is 405, but the actual slugging percentage is 538. So it kind of seems like Nelson's been a bit unlucky with that pitch, and I do think it's a good shift for him to throw more cutters. And overall, he's been a bit unlucky this year. His expected ERA is 4.84, skill interactive ERA 4.40, and his actual ERA is 6.02. So the, the peripherals for Nelson are still not great, but they are a lot better than the results he has gotten so far. Sounds like Spencer Howard will be the bulk reliever for the Giants. We saw Howard in a revenge game against the Phillies last week, four shutout innings, a lot of whiffs in that game, which is a continuation of what he did in AAA, where he had a 32% strikeout rate, did a decent job of suppressing hard contact down there as well. So bad results for Howard down there, but some encouraging signs. I've got this total closer to eight than to nine. So laying minus 115 on the under at nine runs, not bad right now. I think there's plenty of wiggle room to take the under here and bank on the fact that the roof is closed and banked on, bank on some improved luck and improved results for both Nelson and Howard as the primary pitchers for tonight. So we'll take the Diamondbacks and Giants under nine runs. That is minus 115 at FanDuel Sportsbook as of right now. So to recap for today, Giants, Diamondbacks under nine runs, minus 115. I got Terrace Scooble in the alt market, eight plus strikeouts at plus 130. Like the Mets money line at plus 104 and the Rockies money line at plus 110 with that Rockies game being the primary consideration if you're looking for a potential same game parlay to use that 30% uh, profit boost at FanDuel for tonight. Got to finish up by recapping recommendations from last week here on the show, beginning with Austin Swain. Check out Austin on Twitter at aswain3. Find his work over at FanDuel Research over on the Heat Check podcast as well, breaking down each week's UFC event. We had Austin on a preview UFC 302 and a good week by Austin, a profitable week by Austin here. In the main event, which is Poirier versus Makachev, 
he had that fight to start the third round at minus 110. That was a winner because Mikachev won by submission, but it wasn't until the fifth round. So Dustin Poirier didn't get the win, but did prolong that fight long enough to cash that bet for Austin at minus 110. In the other uh, main event, he had Sean Strickland to win either in round four or five or by decision. And Strickland did get the win. It was by a split decision, but a, a win regardless. And it did win by decision there. So good call in both main events by Austin on that one. Other two money lines for Austin were Phil Rowe to win at plus 128 and Nikki Gall to win at three to one. Uh, Rowe and Gall both lost by decision. So didn't get the plus money in either of those, but did get the win in the Randy Brown fight. Randy Brown, twin by points, was plus 180 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Austin was on that one, and Brown did, in fact, win by points. So a three and two week by Austin. The winners at minus 110, plus 115, and plus 180. Good calls by Austin. And again, if you want some more UFC thoughts from Austin, check him out every Friday on the heat check of the FanDuel Research podcast feed, where he breaks down both betting and DFS for each UFC car. We have Tom Vecchio on to talk NBA NHL, uh, previewing the conference finals, the final one we had not yet discussed. He had the Wolves and Mavs series to go six or seven games at uh, plus 200 on each of those markets. The Mavs won in five, uh, so no win for Tom there. The Wolves had plenty of chances to win an additional game or maybe two. Maybe three, who could say? Uh, but they couldn't close in the fourth quarter. So couldn't quite get that one. I think the read overall was correct, uh, but did not get the results. So no win there for that one. We'll have Tom on to talk about the NBA Finals tomorrow. Probably looking Stanley Cup Finals Thursday or Friday later on this week as well. Find Tom on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Finally, for me, I was talking some NASCAR as they were out in Gateway for this week and Bit of a misread by me. I think I undervalued Ford a bit, uh, and it was a lot of Ford to do well. Did have a couple of Fords in my recommendations. Uh, the recommendations were Noah Gregson top ten to three to one, Daniel Suarez top ten at five to one, Michael McDowell top ten at plus six fifty, and Ricky Senas Jr. top ten at twenty to one. McDowell actually won pole. He was very fast on Saturday. Led a bunch of laps early on, but then had a suspension issue during the race and couldn't quite get the job done. So that closed at minus one eighty. But CLV don't play, pay the bills, so it doesn't matter. We got good movement on that one. Uh, Gregson and Suarez both in the 20s. Stenhouse not as competitive as I would have liked. So over four on those. Not a good week there. Kudos to Austin Sindrick on the win in that one. Just a bad read by me on that gateway race. We'll try to bounce back with Sonoma, a road course coming up this weekend. That is all that we have here for today on covering the spread. As mentioned, though, Tom Vecchio will join us tomorrow to break down the NBA finals, giving us his read of that. Uh, we got Belmont Stakes coming up Wednesday, NHL Thursday or Friday. So it should be a really fun week here on the show. Just search for covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five star rating as well. You can find me on, on X at Jim Sonis. You can also find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB bets for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down the NBA Finals. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs>